yo, it's Timmy Lee Glean and I'm coming at you with a, another one of these videos where I sit down in front of the camera and just talk to you about stuff. Now, as you can see from the title of this video, this is me kind of going back into doing something that I haven't done in a while, along with the Bible studies and that's just, you know, just being moved to just really speak, you know, not as a prophet, but just to speak prophetically. And usually the true prophets of old Whenever they brought forth prophetic words, all these words were basically to bring forth the judgments of Yah, bring forth the truth of Yah, and direct people back to the word of Yah, direct people back to his law, statutes, his commandments, and his precepts. In the modern day, we don't have that like we used to. And I believe that's... I mean, many factors, it can be many factors, but I believe that many in the body have lost that fight. Because there's a point in time when people fought and you don't just have to fight. Like, like yeah, people still fight physically. I'm like, that's the main fighting people doing, fighting with their words. But we don't have enough people fighting in prayer in the body, fighting with praise and worship. So this is the time that we need to fight more than any other time in the history of humanity, in the history of existence. A time like this is a time to fight. So I just want to read something to you and then, you know, there's a lot of Holy Spirit to have its way. I prayed prior to recording this video, so, you know, I just hope that this can be edified to you and I hope that this can be an encouragement and motivation because sometimes we forget that the weapons that we have are not carnal, but these are spiritual weapons for the pulling down of strongholds. We look at that and we look at other principles in scripture and just leaning on Yah and, and trusting in Yah and Yah fighting our battles for us and you know vengeance is his and just putting the battle in his hands because it's already won and we have to endure. You know, so I hope that we all, myself included, I'll say me first, need to start fighting for real this is the time to fight because the enemy wants our soul so i'm gonna get into this i'm gonna get into this word um but i'm in uh, ephesians chapter 6 um i'm gonna go through verses 10 through 19. um or 18 we're gonna go to 18 yeah all right so the full armor of god and I'm reading out the Bree and Study Bible, by the way. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God, or Yah, so that you can make your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this world's darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore take up the full armor of God so that in the evil so that when the evil day comes you will be able to stand your ground and having done everything to stand stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness arrayed and and with your feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace and it says in addition to all of this take up the shield of faith now in the King James Version, it says, above all. Because your true protection is the shield of faith. So don't let this translation or any other translation fool you. And not say fool you, because the word is the word and we interpret the word by the Spirit. And it's not a private interpretation, but of the Holy Spirit. But when we look at the words, above all. This is a key piece in our armor. Once again, I read this. So I'm going to read it in the way that I uh, Above all, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Yah. Pray in the spirit at all times with every kind of prayer and petition. To this end, stay alert with all perseverance in your prayers for all the saints. Look at that. It, it says... Pray in the spirit at all times. So the last thing that they mentioned with the armor, you have to put your armor on, then pray. I'm going to tell you one thing. 
There's moments when I wasn't praying or when I wasn't in the word and meditating on the word or even being, you know, sometimes in prayer, it ain't just about talking. Asking God for this, asking it. Sometimes it's about just getting into His presence and letting His presence fall, and allowing that revelation to just just fall upon your minds and your hearts. And Yah will speak to you if you be quiet. So part of our battle is shutting up as well. I think I said that in one of my videos. You know, but where this world is going to, where it's going to is it's going to a very dark place. And the only way you will be able to endure, the only way that you will be able to survive, the only way that you will be able to, I believe, walk the narrow path in this life is to fight. There ain't no other way. There ain't no other way. No, it, it don't it didn't just say just get down and pray. Because sometimes people pray and nothing happens. That's because you don't have no faith. I had moments I didn't have faith. You wanna know why? Because the shield of faith was not up. That's why it says above all. Because without that faith, yeah, you got a sword and you got armor. What's the use of all that if you're open still? If you have the helmet of salvation, just the knowledge that you're saved. <laughs> just that knowledge. <laughs> You know, the beginning of knowledge, wisdom, the fear of Yahuwah. That's protection over our heads. The breastplate of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. That means through righteousness, our hearts are guarded. We're guarded. Our body is guarded by our righteousness. But if we ain't walking in righteousness, that's gone. You know how much can hit you if you're not walking righteous, having a righteous heart towards the Most High, having a righteous heart towards His laws, statutes, and commandments, have a righteous heart towards His Son, Yahushua, which died for us. Have a righteous heart towards brothers and sisters in the faith. You ever try to cut something tough with a dull knife? Depending on how much you in this word depends on how sharp your sword is that you hold. This is a spiritual sword that we hold. It ain't just a Bible itself when we swing the Bible. No. It's the contents of this word. The word of Yah. You gotta think this is this is what we hold in it. I don't have to physically hold a Bible to hold the sword of the Spirit. It's what I hold within, based upon the Word, that sharpens that sword. And that's why we as the body should be sharpening one another. And if we're not sharpening one another, we most likely diluting one another and, and bringing one another down or, or just, just whatever. Like, this is why it's so important to understand that even within the body, we are warring. With our flesh, with other outward principalities, people be used. I know that I've been used for evil. The enemy used me for evil. And then he turned around and used that evil that I've done for good for somebody else. And vice versa with others. I feel like the issue is that we can't pinpoint the battles because we're too busy looking at the outward. We're too busy looking at the circumstances. We're too busy looking left and right. And we're too busy looking at what we can see that we're not trusting in the force that is unseen, that is behind all of this. Because Yah is sovereign. I remember there was a point in time in the, in the book of Exodus. Um, it was when Moses was bringing the Israelites down to the, he brought them all down to the Red Sea and the Egyptians were closing in on them and, and they're like, oh, what, what, you brought us down here to die. Da, 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 da. You know, just like, y'all wanted to bring them to that point where it felt impossible, where it felt like there was no way, where it felt like it was nothing. Why would y'all do that? To give himself glory. And I believe that was 
not even more so for them because a lot of them did not believe that was for us anybody that goes into the tour to reference to have a reference point for how y'all works in today's age we need that Yah's not audibly speaking to people in the way that he spoke in these days. The way that he spoke to Noah, the way that he spoke to Moses. But even so, our Elohim, our Father in heaven, he's the same Father in heaven that was since the beginning. You know what the issue is? Because of the principalities of this world, we have limited and deduced Yah to a book. Well, of course, the contents of the book is important. But our battles, our everything is beyond the word. The word is our manual. The word does show us aspects of Yah. It shows us the nature of Yah and how he worked, especially in the Torah and the prophets. When we go through the gospels and see how Christ and how he lived his life and, 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 and the things that he brought forth, the principles that he brought forth according to Yah's law, statutes and commandments by the Ruach that was in him to walk the walk that he has to be a prime example for us to walk this walk as he walked this walk. Given the doctrine to the apostles and that doctrine that the apostles were given, they went forth and preached it to the Jew first. And Yah has used Paul to preach to the Gentiles the gospel in which he wrote written many letters in principle and in conjunction to what the apostles have been taught and what they passed on to him, Paul. And however, the Holy Spirit led him and guided him to write those letters to those uh, specific churches in context and what they were experiencing to to give us a deeper level of, of principles get deeper down to the intricacies of what Christ was trying to convey and, and point out and there were some epistles from some other individuals just to go into the revelation of John the Baptist which he got to see the end of the world and the new beginning. And we get a love story from the beginning to the end. And how Yah redeems the people from the sins of Adam and Eve through Christ. But we see the in-between time and everything that happened in that in-between time before Christ was died and risen. And even after he died and risen, he's going to come back. And in the meantime, we are to endure. So many of us, just we're just so fixated on escaping everything that we're not even... Some people can't even face the things that's happening today. And this is nothing compared to what's in the book of Revelation. Many people avoid the book of Revelation. Many people avoid many things in the word. Christians that just want to live a good life. So when something bad happens, when you go through trials and tribulations, you can't handle it. That's why people buckle under fear. That's why people compromise. That's why people, people are politically correct and they don't want to stand firm and bold on Yah's principles, on, on His word, on His precepts, on His law, what sin is, according to His word. And when I say law, I know people cringe. No, it's, it's their safety and walking in His statutes. It doesn't mean it's sinless perfection. What are our hearts? Because if we had the Ruach in us and the same spirit that Christ had in him and that lives in us, you're going to want to do whatever you can to serve Yah. However you, like, not however you desire, but however he wills you to desire. Whatever he gives you the grace and the measure to do. And Yah is going to do that in you. But you got to fight. This, this ain't no, once again, it's got now later Christians. Now and later believers, Laffy Taffy believers, Skittles, Snickers, brownies and cupcakes and cotton candy. That's what I see in this country more than anywhere else in the world. I see fluffed up marshmallows and peanut butter jelly sandwiches. That's what I see. I see Similac and Infamil being sipped on daily. 
not in the meat of the word. How are we going to sharpen ourselves? How are we going to arm ourselves with the sword of the spirit? The sli how can we slice down the enemy if we have a dull sword, if we, if we have a butter knife? Because some people's swords are looking like a butter knife. I know what it feels like, that butter knife faith. Because an unsharpened sword is nothing but a butter knife. It's a big old butter knife. That ain't gonna do nothing. Boom. Our feet has to move. We are called for a great commission. Our feet are to move. We are called for a great commission. There's, there's gonna be a point in time where the whole world hears the gospel and then the end will come. But until then, we are to tell people the good news that Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, have died on the cross for us. Or hung on a tree, or hung on a stake, whatever you want to say, I, I'm just going to say cross. I'm going to say cross, I'm going to say he hung on a cross. I believe that he was hung on a cross. Regardless, for all the people that wants to get into the semantics, into the specifics, that want to argue over these, these matters that aren't a means of salvation. Rather, I believe is uh, he's hung on a cross or hung on a tree, like literally hung on a tree. Whatever, whatever you think, think it. Don't come on my channel with these debates. I'm not doing it. I've seen too many arguments. I've seen too many things like that. I'm not here to debate anybody about what I believe right now. I'm here to bring the truth of the gospel of Christ. Oh, he said Christ. He says Jesus. Yes, sometimes I say Jesus. Sometimes I say Christ. You might hear it in my music as well. Sometimes I say Jesus. Two syllables are easier than saying three or four syllables if you're looking at rhyme schemes and things like that. But ultimately, I'm not denoting the name or, or, or not any. I'm not trying to do any of that. I call him Yahushua in most cases. For the sake of the Christian and even myself, uh, uh, the Mashiachim is what they were considered. Translated from Christ, Christos, the anointed one, they, they, that's where they derive Christian from. So the term Christian, I'm not going to look at it as this thing that, uh, were they called Christian back in that first century church? No, the word Christian did not exist. Christ, as far as in the context of calling him Jesus Christ, did not exist. The letter J did not exist. I know that. And these are little small matters that the enemy will want to use. And why am I speaking on these matters? Because there's other aspects of fighting. That we take this and we start slicing our brothers and sisters down with this. We fighting the wrong enemy. We're making each other enemies based upon... Um, what kind of doctrine that we were given, what kind of upbringing that we had, what kind of denomination that we follow, whatever camp that you're a part of, or whatever group or sect or whatever you're a part of. This is why I made a video and I'm gonna continue that. Um, I got more to say about that, but that's why I said I'm done with labels. Because that's a big part of what divides us as a body and yes Christ did say he had come here for division now this is this is there's two levels of division when you're walking a set apart life first of all you're divided from the world and now you have those that consider themselves followers of the Messiah Christians or believers or Mashiach King whatever you want to call yourself set apart or anything like that so in this group of people we are being separated from the wheats and the tares because there's people amongst us in this belief that will be sliced out of us those are the tares now, now here go the wheat now the wheat are still walking this walk just starting out in the spirit there's going to be some wheat that fall away there's going to be some wheat that turn away from the faith there's going to be some wheat that love turns cold and there's going to be some of them tares that come into repentance that's going to that's going to that's going to come into true belief that's going to come into faith i believe that this whole thing is going to end up in one big old religious mess But those who are truly sealed by Yah will be protected from whatever calamity comes on this earth. And I'm not saying that we're, we're going to be 100% just guarded from everything and nothing's going to happen with us or to us or around. Now, I'm not saying that. Persecution is already happening. You see people being 
murdered for the murdered for the faith and, and persecuted and, and beaten and mocked and and, 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 and and ridiculed and belittled and you know it, it, it's so much happening right now just think about just like women around the world and what they got to go through and that's walking in this faith and, and just how much worse it is for them how much worse it is for a wife that might believe in Christ for a husband that believes in something else and by their laws they could get beheaded you know we we think we think we got it tough here wait till you see what comes wait till you see what comes in this country wait till you see what happens here prepare yourselves arm yourselves guard yourselves take upon the armor of Yah with the shield of faith above all else to block the fiery darts of the enemy. Take that sword of the spirit and slice and cut down every demonic principality in front of you in the name of Yahushua, Jesus Christ. This is the time to fight. Sometimes we, we get so caught up in the things of this world, the things of this life, the cares of this world, the pride of life, the, the, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. You know, we, we get so caught up into the things of this world, of this current age, that we forget that we are on the battlefield. And Yah wants to raise up mighty soldiers in these last days. Are you counted worthy of being a soldier for the soldier of Yah, the soldier of our Elohim? And I felt like I wasn't. No, I believe people like me are people that are called. I was a coward. I was effeminate. I was weak. I was a beta male. I was docile. I submitted to the clutches of the devil. I was in his, I was in his hands. Do you want to talk about men walking in wizardry? I was walking in complete evil with no idea what I was walking into. When I walked away from that, all hell broke loose. This ain't me. Yah's working something supernatural in his people right now. He is supernaturally raising up an army right now. Are you ready for war? Because the number one way you get to war is in prayer. Stand in the gap for your brothers and sisters through prayer. Stand in the gap for your children through prayer. Stand in the gap for your unsaved loved ones through prayer. And um, because the way this world is going, we need uh, where this world is going, uh, you can't see what I can see. I clearly see the end. You never known despair until you can comprehend the wrath of God falling upon this planet. When those vials are poured out over the earth, when those trumpets are sounding, a third of humanity gone, a third of the resources gone. Yah will bring calamity to those that are against him. Against the wicked. Against those that transgress his ways willfully. Those that haven't believed. Those that walk in, in wickedness. Those that are in rulership right now. That aren't leading their people into righteousness. They all will be judged and Christ is coming back. To slay the wicked. Yah's wrath, it will be poured out on this planet. Read the book of Revelations. Stop being scared for what's to come. And prepare yourself. Get into his word. Pray. Trust in him. There ain't no other way except do. 
the son of the living Elohim, Yahusha. He said, there's no way to the Father except through me. I am the truth, the way, and the life, and there's no way to the Father except through me. Whatever you ask for in his name, in Yahushua's name, Jesus' name, and a lot of people talk about the name. I said lots of things in Jesus' name and it worked because I knew the spirit behind the name that I was saying. Let's not get on names. Let's get on the spirit of the Son of Yah. And whatever you ask for in his name, and if you ask for it with unwavering faith, like it has happened, so shall it be. If it's in alignment with Yah's will. How about you pray to stay on the narrow path? How about you pray for your children to be well behaved? How about you pray to be delivered? And not just pray. You heard what the book says. It says put on your armor and then pray. Because while you praying, your faith gonna be attacked. You you need to shield it. Like when you praying, if you're not praying, and this is what I believe, by the way, when you're praying in the spirit, meaning praying in tongues, praying in the spirit, I I believe the enemy does not understand. I believe that language of the spirit, when you're moved by the ruach to speak and pray, I believe that's unto Yah, and that's it. But when we talk about prayers that people can audibly audibly hear. The enemy hears your prayers and tries to attack your faith during the prayer. Haven't you noticed that? After you walked away from that prayer and, and nothing happening and you're not walking in victory and you're not even having faith and now you have a bad attitude towards Yah because he's not answering your prayer in the time that you wanted him to answer it when you have a lack of faith in him. This is a battlefield. The enemy don't want to attack anything more than our faith. You know who's going to hell? People without faith. You're going to hell. There's, there's no place for anybody without faith <laughs> in the kingdom of Yah. So I will hope that you can grow in your faith. I will hope. You want to talk about fighting? It's time to fight. We fight with our prayers. We fight with praise and worship. Yes, you're going to go through things and we count it joy. Meaning when trials and fiery tests happen in your life, things happen. You rejoice that you've been chosen. That is the evidence that you're truly walking with Yah. Because if not, life will be easy. So I trust in Yah. I hope that you trust in Yah. This is the time to fight. This is the time to go to war. This is the time to use our spiritual weaponry because our weapons are not carnal. Trust and believe in that. So, praise Yah. But I just want to pray before I um, close out this video. I thank you for, thank you, you know, but this ain't the end, but this thank you. Um, have a deeper thank you, but hey. Heavenly Father, in the name of Yahusha, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, I come to you humbly, Heavenly Father, just in the spirit of meekness, uh, humbling myself before your presence, Heavenly Father. Let me decrease as you increase in me, Heavenly Father. I don't desire any glory for anything that I said. I don't desire anything less than giving you the glory. I know how some people in the past, Heavenly Father, have spoken some things to me and it got to my head and it puffed me up a little bit, Heavenly Father. I just want to repent for any time I've been puffed up from anything that anybody said about me. You deserve all the glory, honor, and praise for everything, Heavenly Father. I just want to come forth humbly, Heavenly Father, just to thank you for the viewers of this video, Heavenly Father. Thank you for their lives. I pray that you truly touch them, Heavenly Father. I pray that you could truly bless them in whatever they're endeavoring to do or endeavoring to move forward towards, Heavenly Father. I pray that you guide their steps, Heavenly Father. I pray that you open their ears of understanding, incline their ears to hear the things that you desire for them to hear, Heavenly Father. Rather this message or rather just any other outside factor, Heavenly Father. 
Use these things as a sign, Heavenly Father. Use this word as water, Heavenly Father, for those seeds that are already planted. And use this as those that have just free soil, Heavenly Father, good soil. Allow this word to be planted into that good soil, Heavenly Father. I don't come to anybody as a shepherd or anything, but just as a servant, Heavenly Father. Just, just to speak from my heart and from... You know, the things that I can think of, Heavenly Father, and just led of the Spirit in doing so. So I thank you for the Rock HaKadosh, Heavenly Father, to be implanted inside of me, Heavenly Father, to dwell inside of me, for me to be filled with, to speak these words of encouragement for my brothers and sisters to just fight. I pray in the name of Yahushua, Heavenly Father, that you just increase the, the fire to want to fight for their lives, Heavenly Father, for their salvation, for the salvation of their children, for the salvation of their parents, for the salvation of brothers and sisters, unsaved loved ones, for the salvation of those that are in their congregations, Heavenly Father, those that they know they aren't living right or according to your ways that think that they're walking with you, Heavenly Father. I pray that repentance fall upon those that are walking contrary to your word, Heavenly Father, and know what they're doing, Heavenly Father. I just pray, Heavenly Father, in the name of Yahushua, that we can have a fire to get into your word more, to sharpen our word, Heavenly Father, to sharpen our sword more, Heavenly Father. I pray that we can hold up our shield of faith so that our faith may not be hindered, Heavenly Father, because we have the shield to block away every attack on our faith, Heavenly Father. I pray for that spiritual armor to be encompassed around our whole bodies to protect us with the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit, that we can go to prayer armed, Heavenly Father, knowing that the enemy wants to attack our prayers, the enemy wants to attack things, but Yah, whatever you're desiring to do and whatever you you wanted to do as it says in your word heavenly father every word that proceeded forth heavenly father will accomplish what is meant to accomplish those promises that you've given us heavenly father those are promises and you are faithful and true to your word let every man be a liar but let you be true heavenly father i've seen examples of it heavenly father just in my personal life nothing I mean nothing, even the things that I'm still waiting on, things that I'm patient on, I'm patient with those things, Heavenly Father, but what I mean is every single thing that I prayed for have been answered. I know my prayers have been aligned with your will, y'all, and they have been answered. Was my faith attacked many times? Yes. Was I dealing with mental attack? Yes. Heavily. But y'all, you've been delivering me. You've been freeing me from the bondage of sin that I was in. You freed me from the clutches of the devil that I was in. You brought me out of Egypt and freed me and brought me through the desert and the wilderness. And now this is the time where I walk into that promised land. The land of milk and honey which you promised your people through that promise of Abraham. That his descendants will be numbered as the stars, y'all. We are those children of promise, y'all. I'm grateful and I'm so thankful, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I have faith in you. Where this world is going right now, Heavenly Father, I just pray. That you raise up parents, Heavenly Father, to raise up their children. My children's generation and just the next generation of people are growing up in one of the worst times ever, Heavenly Father. Protect the children, y'all, I pray. Protect those little ones, Heavenly Father. Walking into an evil, evil age. As Christ said, it shall be like the days of Noah. I believe it's going to be worse than the days of Noah. These technological advancements that we've had just over the past 20 years alone. How much more will it be in 20 years? Perversion, laws, and Statutes of this land that will be implemented to destroy our children. I'm going to be honest, they can have it. 
they can have it. I don't want it. Yeah, I want you in that song. We should have a heart to desire you and want you above all else. Give us a heart to fight. Give us a heart to fight, Father. Give us a heart to fight for these future generations. Give us a fire to go to war for you. And to raise up a next generation that is greater than us, y'all. I pray that whoever is under the sound of my voice, I pray that they get a fight in them. I pray that they get into the presence of the Father right now. Heavenly Father, unction them and move them by your Ruach to get into your presence right now. Whatever's on their hearts, Heavenly Father, bring them to a place of repentance. Let them turn away from those ways and let them move forward in the Ruach to fight for your kingdom. Hallelujah. And I won't fall short to give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Yahushua's name. Amen. <laughs> amen. Oh, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I know. that we fight we fight so that we can endure because there's a principle in war either kill or be killed you can either let a country you can either let uh, an opposing army just come into your country and take it over you can stand your ground and that's called enduring it doesn't say he that just believes well of course it says he that believes will be saved but there's deeper principles to believing you have to put that faith into action and that's how you endure you have to stand these times and just believe in this to believe is just to have your foot in the door you want to get in the house endure the trials that are to come when you walk in his faith don't allow the cares of this life and don't allow persecution to make you cower in fear and walk away from the faith people walk away from the faith in its entirety from hearing the truth of the word offended by the word they're offended by the word and the truth this is why we endure so that we can live with Yah forever after the thousand year reign. So Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and new earth. For the first heaven and earth had passed away. And the sea was no more. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem. Coming down out of heaven from God. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying. Behold, the dwelling place of Yah is with man and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and Yah himself will be with them as their Elohim. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the former things have passed away. The one seated on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are faithful and true. And he told me, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To, to the thirsty I will give freely from them the spring of the water of life. The one who overcomes or endures will inherit all things and I will be his Elohim and he will be my son. And I'm going to read this last one here. 
but to the, to the cowardly and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and sexually immoral and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, all liars. Their place will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, and this is the second death. You see that beautiful world where there's going to be no more crying, no more death, no more pain, no more... Uh, that's going to happen. But you got to endure. I want to encourage you with this. Yah is with you. He knows what you're experiencing. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you need. He knows what you're battling. Sometimes our biggest issue isn't even the trial itself. Our biggest issue is not praying. <laughs> and on top of not praying, people pray and things don't happen because they're praying in vain. They're not praying with the right motive on their hearts. They're not praying in faith. Your faith is increased when you get into the Word and see how Yah moves. That's why I will always suggest go into the Torah. I know many people that our Christians will tell you, read the book of John, or read the epistles, or read the, and I believe those are great, the epistles are great principles for, you know, having an understanding of how the church should be operating in today's day and age. The gospels are very vital, but if we, because it's, it's, it's the life of Christ, and his ministry, and, and his life and burial, resurrection, um, so those are important. It's the, walking word in human flesh you know so that is the vitality of the entirety of the word but we wouldn't know or appreciate christ without the torah because the torah is the foundation so i'll tell you if you go into that torah and really understand how yah moved with his people moved in his people those principles that he even laid out in the prophets and with those kings and just with those mighty men of old and just and just how he worked in the old testament how he worked that same Elohim is with you, but if you don't know the word, if you get half of the, like you get half of the word, you're not getting the thus saith the Lord. That's what you need. We need this word in balance. Many of my Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters, they don't have enough knowledge of the grace of Yah through His Son Yahushua. This thing is law, 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 law. With no ruach. Out there hating people. Out there condemning people to hell. This is why I'm done with these labels. I'm done with it all. It's time to fight. This, this is a set apart people. Kodashim. And I know there's brothers and sisters of mine that consist of Hebrew Israelites. And there's brothers and sisters of mine that considers themselves Christians. I believe people on both sides are going to heaven. And I'm sitting here in this in-between place looking at all this like, man, this is a one big mess we have in here. One big racial mess we got in here. Those promises of Abraham was meant not just for his descendants in the natural. There is a spiritual kingdom that we are joined into. The Gentiles are not Gentiles if they're grafted into this faith. <laughs> and that's something that we have to understand. Are there specific promises? Are there specific things towards the children of Israel specifically? Those, yes. But there are those that are grafted into the promise that will be blessed as well. Just to be grafted in. I'm not here to spew my thoughts on me being an Israelite, by the way. I told you I'm done with that. You know what I am, whatever. You know, I've got another video that I might release before or after this, I don't know. Um, I'll probably record it a little later, maybe, so. This video might come after that, but just a conjunction on those last two parts of I'm done with the labels. I'm done with the labels because I really realize 
throwing two labels on myself was the biggest, one of the biggest parts of my warfare in this walk with Yah. Is to consider myself an Israelite but also a Christian. Because you're going to get it on both sides. <laughs> so you know what? Kodesh Shem, set apart. You know, and, and uh, Mashiach King. Uh, you know, Mashiach King, set apart. You know, that's what I am. Set apart, Timmy. You see the name on, on, on this page. Um, I'm set apart. You know, and if you're walking with Yah truly, guarding his ways by the Ruach, you know, walking a walk that is in step or in line with the son of that living Elohim, Yahushua. You know, a, a life of dying to self daily and being reborn again, you know, so. That world that we're promised, we're promised to get there if we fight. It's time to go to war, y'all. So I hope that this message has blessed you truly. I hope the prayer has blessed you. And I just want to thank everybody that's been subscribing to the channel as of late. I want to thank all the new subscribers. Um, I want to thank everybody that's been receptive to the content. I know this, some videos don't get as many views as others, but I'm so thankful to everybody. I believe that Yah has his will and whoever is meant to listen to this stuff will listen to it. And I'm believing more and more that he will continue to grow this channel as I continue to grow in him. You know, I believe Yah has used, used a lot of this to humble me. I've seen a lot of people's channels grow fast and I coveted after that. And that was not right. And not to say I'm jealous of others or anything like, but it's like, man, if they if they could grow fast, man, I want to do that too. And it's like, it's, and then you get so caught up into the numbers and then you get so caught up into the, I know Yah has anointed me heavily. And this is why I believe as well that these numbers are low. It's to humble me right now. Because I knew if I were to get thousands and thousands and thousands of views, that would just puff my head up crazy. So, you know, ultimately, once again, I just hope that this message has blessed you. And, you know, y'all bless you in Yahushua's name. Woo -woo.